heads as we pray. We thank you, our dear Heavenly Father, for the grace and the privilege that we have to gather in your presence. We appreciate you because it is by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that we overcome. And that that victory is forever and ever. Lord, we want to go into your word at this time. It is our prayer, O oh God, that you will let the words of my mouth and the meditations that will be going on in the hearts of your people as they listen be acceptable before you in the name of Jesus Christ. At the end of this message, O oh God, grant us the grace to be fully assured of the victory we have over the devil. For we pray in the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Most High God, I welcome every one of us into the presence of the Lord. And I pray that the blessings of this service shall be permanent in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Last week, Sunday, I started a serial teaching on fighting the battles of life. And by the grace of God, through the scriptures, we are able to establish that it is the will of our God that every Christian should be able to stand on their feet at least to defend their territory. If they cannot defend another person's territory, they cannot pray for somebody else, it is our duty as Christians to be able to defend our own territory. And we saw from Psalm 144, verse 1 especially, where the psalmist made it clear that it was God that actually taught him how to fight. In the psalm we read today also, we saw the psalmist also making allusion to that statement again, that it was by the strength of God that he was able to break through a true, and then it was the Lord that strengthened him, that taught him how to fight and to subdue nations under himself. And we also established last Sunday through the word of our Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 11, I think verse 12, the scripture says, Since the day of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violent, and the violent taken by what? By faith. So that means those who are violent in the spirit are the ones that will be able to subdue all the attacks that the enemy might bring against them. And by the reason of that, the devil will not be able to divert them from the kingdom, from their journey to the kingdom of God. But if they are weaklings, if they cannot fight or cannot stand to defend their territory, the enemy will come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And so, they may eventually lose eternity with God. So today, by the grace of God, we're going to build on that. And the theme, the sub theme for today is weapons of the enemy. What are the weapons that the enemy uses? Because if you understand the weapon of your adversary, you will know how to prepare. If somebody is coming against you, maybe with a knife, you will know for sure that you must at least get a cutlass. Right? So if somebody is coming with a tank, then you know you have to come with an anti-tank to be able to counter that um, enemy. So knowing, having a knowledge of the weapons will also help you to fortify yourself, to defend yourself. You know the kind of defense uh, you will need. And our text is the first lesson that uh, was read for us this morning, Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Now the serpent was more subtle than any piece of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, as God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the servant, serpent. Unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the tree of the but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the servant said unto the woman, ye shall not surely, you, ye shall not surely die. For God, for God does know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. And you shall be of God, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it That's was right. pleasure. That's right. Thank you. Now, in this passage, 
we will discover that there is a certain tool that encompasses all other tools that the devil normally uses to attack people. And that is the very first thing that was mentioned about his nature and character in that passage. The Bible says, now the serpent was more subtle, or in another translation, cunning, or in another way, crafty. I want to let us know, people of God, that if Satan should appear now, be, I say, yes, I'm Satan. Not, it's not very common that Christians will want to you know, listen to him. Because you already know that is the adversary. That is the enemy. That is what the word of God has been warning me about. I shouldn't have anything to do with him. But the enemy, whenever he wants to attack any child of God, he will come in a very subtle way. In a way you will least expect. Look at what happened between Satan and Adam and Eve in, in, in the garden, according to that passage. He came in a subtle manner. And so, after that subtlety, and now I want us to pay very particular attention to the details of what happened there. After he approached them subtly, he now began to engage them in a conversation. People of God, I want to beg you in the name of the Most High God, never engage in a conversation with the devil. He is smart, he is corny, he is crafty. The moment you allow a conversation between you and the devil, if you are not sensitive in the spirit of God, he will derail you. Hello? The scripture says, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing what? By the word of God. So, the opposite of faith is what? Fear. Fear also cometh by what? By hearing. The word. The word of who? The word of the enemy. The moment the enemy comes at you subtly and begins to have conversation with you, begins to talk with you, he is interested. No, take note of this. He is interested in keeping you talking so that you will expose your weak points to him. That is his interest. That is his first point. He will keep you talking and talking and talking, and before you know it, I'm sure we will all remember the story of Samson and Delilah. Samson could not hold his peace, could not shut his mouth. He kept talking and talking and talking to the devil's adverse and industry in his house until he revealed the source of his strength and then the enemy was able to attack and destroy his glory. Instead of using the anointing that God has given him to defend and protect and deliver the entire nation, he ended up spending it to defend, to, 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 to defend himself. After the enemy has messed him up, has made a ridicule of his life. So that's one thing we should take note of. Never engage in a conversation with the enemy. And I will, as we go on, I will still mention it when we are talking about the thoughts of, of our hearts. Never. Another thing is that the enemy wants you to keep talking so that you will reveal the future, your future that God has told you about. And that is why sometimes God always holds back when it comes to revealing his secret, the secrets of our lives to us. Because the enemy will engage us in, in a subtle way and begin to talk with us until we now begin to say, ah, yes, God is taking his rules. God is going to make me great. God is going to take me, he's going to make me uh, the president or whatever. And by the time you open your mouth too wide to talk to the enemy, the enemy knows where you're going. And you now know how to prepare to counter that future. Remember the story of Joseph. At least that will come to mind. Even in his own household, he told his brothers and his parents, ah, God has shown me I've had this dream. And the brothers and the parents were able to adequately interpret that. They interpreted it correctly. But the scripture says his father kept it in his heart. But his brother were jealous. And they began to watch out and look for opportunities to terminate that glory. The enemy will not terminate your glory in the name of Jesus. The scripture says he that shut his mouth keeps his word, his life. So once the enemy engages you in a conversation, terminate it as soon as possible before you say too much. And sometimes it will also want to engage you in talking 
so that you will begin to say negative things about yourself. He will be showing you a lot of things and he will be conversing with you to the extent that you begin to now say negative things about your own self. And the moment you pronounce that negative thing, he will stamp it. And if God says, no, 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 you can't do that to my son, he will say, your son said it. And the moment you, it, it can be confirmed, God cannot help you at that point. Until you now have to run back to God and say, Father, I made that mistake. He says, keep up, Lord, please have mercy, deliver me. Because the scripture says the enemy, the devil, is our adversary. And he's doing what? He's accusing us before God day and, and night. Praise the Lord. So let us be very, very, very careful. And let me now contrast that and see something. Let's, look, let's go to Luke. And contrast it with something we learned from the life of, um, what, of the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 2. I want us to read verses 19 and 51. Luke chapter 2, 19 and 51. The Bible says, and Mary, when the glory of Christ, the journey of the life of Christ was revealed to her, jumped out and began to pronounce it to the whole world. Am I correct? No. What did he say? She kept it where? In her heart. She kept it where? In her heart. She understood the importance of secrecy. Captains of industries know how to keep the secrets of their businesses so that the adversaries will not be able to, to snatch it and to use it against them. One of the most guarded secrets in the world today is, um, is Coca-Cola's uh, formula. I hope we know. They are, so, they are guarding that thing that you cannot duplicate. It. And that is why they continue to be relevant through all the generations up until now. So the scripture says Mary kept it in her heart. She didn't discuss it with anybody. Now go to verse 51. Yes. And he went down with them. Jesus went down with them back to Jerusalem. Yes. And they came back to Nazareth. Yes, he was subject unto them. And his mother kept all the saying. And Mary, his mother, kept all the saying of Jesus. Where? In her heart. And what was he saying? Jesus told them in the temple that I must of a necessity go about doing my father's business. I, God has sent me as a deliverer to the whole nation, to the whole world. God, the angel told Mary from the beginning. And the scripture says, Mary kept all these things in her heart. As God revealed the glory of your children to you, I hope you are not discussing it with your neighbors. As God shown you where he is taking you in life, I hope you have not opened your mouth to talk to the enemy. Because if you do so, you have presented yourself vulnerable to attack. And the ability to escape will be very, very slim. Except to quickly go back to God and say, Baba, I have opened the door for the enemy. I have made a mistake. I have opened my mouth too wide. Please have mercy. That is why some people are fighting unnecessary battle in life today. I pray the Lord will deliver every one of us in the name of Jesus Christ. We will not fall victim of the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. So that's the one, one of the number one thing that the enemy does. He will come and be having conversations with you, and before you know it, he will be using irrelevant words. Look at the way she, he presented it to, to, to Adam and Eve. As God said, you should not eat of every, if God said you should not eat of every tree. So what are they going to be eating? He twisted the word of God in a crafty manner and presented it to them to strike the conversation. And they didn't know when to stop. He tried that with Jesus Christ. I hope you remember. He tried that with the Lord Jesus Christ. He began to talk to Jesus. Hey, if you are the son of God, why don't you turn this stone to bread so that you can eat and be, you be full? What did Jesus say? I come, I, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Period. He tried it the second time. He gave him another word. He tried it the second time. He gave him another word. And now said, get thee behind me. What? Satan. That should be our attitude. We'll talk about it when we're talking about the weapons of Christians. But not this. That the enemy wants to keep you talking so that you will reveal the secrets of your life. So guard your mouth, protect your mouth, seal your lips, and the enemy will not be able to get you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Right. The second thing he does to bring Christians down, to bring the people of God down, is to cause confusion in their camp. That is what, if you look again at that same chapter, chapter three. That same passage read. 
you will discover that he, he twisted the word of God in such a way that got this woman thinking. She was like, no, God didn't tell us that. This is what God told us. She now went further to begin to pollute the mind, to confuse her so that she will not know what to believe again. Should I believe God? Should I believe the, this guy that is talking to me now? Confusion set into, into her spirit. And said, okay, fine. For me to be sure, let me taste it. So if you allow the devil to bring confusion into your heart, to bring confusion into your family, to bring confusion anywhere around you, you are opening a door to him. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33, the scripture says, God is not the author of what? Of confusion. If God says, go straight, 100 times, go back to me, he will always tell you, this is my will, go straight. If you choose to go to the right or to the left, it is your choice. God will not say, go, go straight and go left. No. If he says, go straight, he says, go straight. When you reach some point, then you can make a left turn or make a right turn. God does not give confusing instruction. His instructions are clear and straight forward. But the moment the enemy begins to sow the seed of confusion and doubt into your heart, note that that is the enemy. Amen? Amen. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 8. The scripture says, He that breaks the hedge, the serpent will bite. Adam and Eve broke the hedge by allowing confusion to creep into their heart. And the, the Satan, the devil was able to do what? To bite them. And the world is yet to recover from the impact of that singular mistake. Thank God for Jesus that has brought us out of that darkness and is keeping us going. Praise the Lord. So take note of that. Don't engage in any conversation with the enemy and don't allow him to confuse you about what God has told you that you have always believed. The third thing. The weapon, another weapon that the enemy uses is fear. What did I call it? Fear. Now, when I say fear, I'm not talking about that natural response or that natural is that startles you when you see something. Big. For instance, if we see maybe a snake creeps into this place and begin to sit all around the floor, everybody will be scared and will begin to jump. That is natural. That is normal. Or maybe somebody is standing and I crept behind him or her and say, hey, and that person jumps. That is a natural response. I'm not talking about that. But when fear becomes dominating or dominating in one's heart, that you want to do this one, hey, can I do it? Hey, that one is not possible. Hey, I hope I'm not going to do that. Hey, I hope I'm not going to have accident. Hey, I, I hope, you know, when that kind of thought begins to dominate your heart and begin to oppress you, that it is difficult for you to think straight, it is no longer natural. It is no longer godly, but demonic. Hello? Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear. So, if God has not given us the spirit of fear, and it is not the spirit of man, then where is it coming from? It is, the, it is coming from the enemy. So that means it is the enemy that gives the spirit of fear. And that's why some people say, ah, I don't think I can make it. I don't think I can go on. It's better I, 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 I go and commit suicide. That's what usually leads to depression and then people leading to, I mean, leading people to, to take their own life. So let's be careful. Let us be very, very careful. Fear is a terrible weapon in the hand of the enemy. And it's one of the weapons he used the most. Look at Genesis, Genesis chapter 25. In the life of Esau and Jacob, you will, you will look, you will see something very interesting there. Genesis chapter 25, verse 32. If anybody's there, you can read for me. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die. Behold, I am at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? And what benefit or profit shall this birthright do to me? And Jacob said, And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. Mm -hmm. And this swear. And he swore and unto me. Can you imagine that? Can you see how fear robbed Esau of his glory, of his future, of his birthright? How? He said, I am about to. How can somebody that even if he did not eat from morning to evening? And there are people that go seven days without food. 
But this man has just missed maybe one or two meals. And he was scared that he was going to die. And so he, could, he was ready to buy back his, his life with anything. I'm going somewhere here, people of God. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 2 now, verse 15. So that we now begin to see how fear can mess up people's lives. The scripture there says some people, because of the fear of death, they put themselves under bondage. I want us to read it, please. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 15. No problem. Go ahead. Yes. Jesus Christ delivered some people who through what? Fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Can you hear that? Because of the fear of death, because Esau did not want to die, she put her himself under the bondage, under the rulership of his younger brother. Because of fear of death, some people will run out of the covering of the church and go to begin to look for talisman and begin to look for juju and all those things that do not help. People of God, do not allow the spirits of fear to operate in or around you. The moment you allow him, hey, he's going to eat you. Let me give us another classic example from the scriptures. Let's look at Job. Job chapter 3, verse 25. Now, as we are reading, as we are trying to open, I want us to take note of the fact that Job had a conversation with God. I mean, Satan had a conversation with God. And God was like, Can you have you seen my servant Job? Very pure, very holy, very decent, nice man. He doesn't compromise, he doesn't do this, he doesn't do that. Do you know what the devil said? The devil said, eh, It's because you are, you, are, you are protecting him now. Is it not because you are protecting him? If you look at verse 10, what did, what did verse 10 say before you go? Before you go, verse 10 of chapter 1. Come, 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 yeah, yeah. No, um, no, chapter one, verse, uh, verse 10. Sorry, I, I, I got you confused. Yeah, it's, it's my mistake. Yes. And thou not made an egg about him. <laughs> now, yes. And about his house. Mm -hmm. And about all that he has on every side. Mm -hmm. Thou and blessed the work of his hands. Mm -hmm. And his substance mm -hmm. is increased in the land. <laughs> now, I'm going somewhere. Please, I want you to follow me very carefully. God was showing this, the devil how good, how beautiful, how well this guy was serving God. He said that the, the enemy now began to say, it's, it's because you are protected in round about now. If your enemy is telling you that, you can, begin, you can begin to imagine how God has protected him. And that means the devil has tried to attack him, but he could not penetrate the protection that God has placed around Job. So that means God has done what he should do, my girl. Let's have the answer, please. She is in the presence of her father. So let her be herself. So God has fortified Job and is blessing him. But let us see how Job opened the door for the enemy. Let us see how Job broke the edge. Now let's go to now um, Job chapter 3, verse 25. Now, how did Job mistakenly, unknowingly, without knowledge? Open the door for the enemy. For the thing which I greatly fear. Now, can you hear Job opening his mouth? He said, For the things which I greatly feared is come upon me. Come upon me. And, uh, and that which I was afraid of. And that which I was afraid of is come unto me. me. That was how Job opened the door. God did not just God, God, God is not interested. In, in Buga, like we always say. So God, God is not interested in just showing his power to say, okay, go and destroy his family, go and destroy everything. But mm -hmm. God is a God of justice. This guy, Job, has been nursing this thing in his heart. The devil has planted that seed of fear. And that's greatly fear. If you look at that in another translation, means terror. That thing that has been terrorizing me in my heart. Hey, I hope my children are not going to die. Hey, I hope no, no, my, my, my visa is not going to collapse. That fear has constantly been in his heart. He has been losing it over time. And the devil has noted that 
and he had wanted to attack him, but God was protecting him. But one day came in the courtroom of heaven. God was there, and Satan began to accuse Job and began to accuse God. See, this guy has been doing this, but you kept protecting him. Beautiful. You didn't let me pass the judgment. I thought that's okay. For judgment to be passed, touch everything. He's been he's, he's scared of losing, but don't touch his life. People of God, God is just. Don't open the door for the enemy. And that was why Job lost everything that he had ever kept. So Job broke the edge, and the scriptures cannot be broken. It must of a necessity be fulfilled. So he opened the door. That's why the fact that God is doing what he should do. He opened the door for the enemy to attack again. He attacked and lost everything. I pray God will help us to understand these things better in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So don't allow fear under whatever circumstance. You may see things like your Bible say, koro, koro, like this. Challenging you, confronting you. As a child of God, you are not supposed to begin to fidget and to run up and down and allow fear and confusion to, to turn your head. No. Stand your ground and tackle your challenge. Any challenge you, you, you navigate around is postponed and it's going to be compounded. We must always face one challenge or the other. And the more we conquer challenge that we can say, we are conquerors. But if you run away from challenges, this is where your glory is. This is the way God has said you should go. And for you to get there, you must climb steps. But if you now choose to take the easy, low way, no problem, free ride. You just feel like you're going down the valley instead of going up the hill. And every obstacle you surmount will serve as a stepping stone for higher ground. So face the enemy. The Bible says, resist the what? The devil. And he will do what? He will flee. The Bible does not say, turn your back at the enemy and run away. No. Face him, resist him, and he will flee. So people of God, never, never, never Allow fear to have a place in your heart under whatever circumstance. It opens the door for the attack of the enemy. The moment you allow it, you are telling God hands off. And there is nothing God will be able to do at that point until you realize it and quickly say, God, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm focusing my, 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 my eyes on faith now. And then God will be able to do that again. We will talk about the, the weapons of Christians. Maybe next Sunday, by the grace of God. God give us better understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. Another thing that we need to take note that the enemy does to rob us is through careless thoughts. Through careless what? Thoughts. Careless thoughts. And that is why the scripture in Proverbs chapter 23. Okay, let's go there. Let's go there. Let's go there. Proverbs 23. Verse 7. Yeah. Yes. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Yes. Praise the Lord. Listen very carefully to that passage. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. If a man is thinking victory all the time, if a man is thinking progress all the time, if a man is thinking success all the time, so is the life of that man or that woman. But if a man or a woman is thinking defeat, destruction, and death, it is just only a matter of time. Example of Job. Before that thing to happen. As a man thinketh in his heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth what? Speaks. And as the heart thinks, so is the life of a man being formed in conformity with what a man thinks in his heart. If a man sees himself that he is protected, God is going to be committed to his protection. But if a man thinks he's vulnerable, then he has opened the door, like I always say, to the enemy. And that's why Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, the scripture says, above all things, Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it comes the issues of life. 
out of your heart comes the issues of your future, of your glory, of God's blessings, of everything that has to do with you. And you want to read that passage? Yes, please read so that we will read Keep your heart with Jeleke, right? Pay attention to it. Do it. Be deliberate about protecting the thoughts that emanates from your heart. Because out of it, out of your heart, are things that will determine your future, are things that will determine your life, are things that will determine your destination, are things that will determine your position and attainment in life. So that is why God is now saying, guard it with all diligence. Be serious about it. Be deliberate about it. Proverbs 4 23. So let's be very, very careful because this is how it goes. The moment you allow an evil thought, and most of the times it is the enemy that will bring that, it will just whisper. You will, you will not know. You will think it's your own thought. You will just begin to think it. You just begin to think it. And the thought will begin to expand and to increase in your heart. You begin to now see reasons. You now begin to see somebody, maybe the person that does not know God. Ah, yeah, yes, yeah. somebody has done something like that. Yeah, that is true. I can, you, you be, the devil begin to give you examples, examples, and then you begin to think and you begin to, to get bigger and bigger and stronger and stronger. You are. Let's go to Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 to 5. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 through 5. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Yes. But, but mighty through God. Uh-huh. So wait, and... wait. He says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So that means what he wanted to talk about will require the use of some spiritual weapon. So that means it is a weapon that the enemy uses that he wants to describe. Yes, go on. For mighty through God. They are mighty. Our weapons are mighty through God. Yes. Yes, so the pulling down of what? Stronghold. Now let us listen to the definition of that stronghold. Yes? Casting down imagination. Casting down imagination. Now hold on. Where do we have imaginations? In our heart. In our mind. Thinking. Thoughts. Casting down thoughts. Casting down imaginations. Yes? Casting down imaginations. Yes. And every. I think that God had against the knowledge of God. all those thoughts, all those imaginations that are against the will of God for your life, you must cast them down. Yes, and bring in all those thoughts, all those thoughts, all those thoughts into captivity. Every thought of the obedience, every thought, right. mm-hmm. not of the obedience, really, very, 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 very. I know that's and bring it into captivity. Every thought to the, to the obedience of Christ. So any thought that is contrary to the will of God in your life, you must deal with it and make sure your thought aligns with the will of God for your life, with the will of Jesus Christ for your life. Because the enemy will give you a subtle suggestion. Like I said from the beginning, you will just think it is your own thought. You think you are the one that is, you will think the thought is originating from you. And then you begin to process it and process it. And before you know it, you will own it. And the moment you hold it, the way a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So you just discover and you begin to, 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 to channel your life in the line of the negative thought that the enemy is bringing to your heart. And before you know it, you will become a stronghold. It will become a mighty fortress that you will now have to fast and to pray before you now be able to pull it down. But you don't have to let it get to that stage. Every tree that is not planted by God or put it away from the root quickly from your heart. If any evil thought is coming to her, in the name of Jesus, I cast her. That's not my thought. I reject it. You may just sit down and begin to think, ah, maybe, maybe, God forbid, maybe somebody's son is going to go, or somebody's uh, going to have an attack. No, in the name of Jesus, it's not going to happen. Ah, maybe I will fail that exam. No, in the name of Jesus, I will pass. That should be our attitude. I remember a man of God. He went to a village to preach one day. He had prayed, he had prepared. He went. They invited him. When he got there, even the members of the church didn't come out as such. Just a few members came out. He, he preached all the same. He made altar call. Just one small boy just came and just gave his life to Christ. He prayed for him all the same and he went back. So on his way back to the city, he was now thinking, the devil now you know, was talking to him and said, look, can you imagine how as powerful as you are? 
as popular as you are. You went to a village, not, not up to 100 people even came out. You know, just few people just came out and you preached, you preached, you wasted your energy, you prayed, wasted your time. And you made a altar call. Can you imagine? Shame on you. You made a altar call. Just one small boy came out. You are a whole you. And you began to process that thought. You began to continue to process it. Until suddenly the Spirit of God reminded him, look, this is not of God. He just, he just parked his car by doing and went to the passenger side and opened him and said, in the name of Jesus, devil, get out of my car. You have to be that radical. You have to be that deliberate. You have to be that you know, rugged and violent. If he had allowed the devil to continue to feed him like that, he will go back to that crusade the following day with bitterness in his heart. And the devil will be able to finish his ministry at that point. But he dealt with the situation, he vocalized it. Because there are times when some thoughts will be so captivating, so, so capturing, so dominating, that you will have to vocalize it before they will stop. I've been there. I have been there. That the thought will just keep coming and coming. I will just have to go and say, just quickly separate myself and say, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you, Satan. Get out of my heart. And then I will have peace. But if you don't allow it, you will hate the whole world. Hello? Hello? And God does not sow the seed of hatred. Praise the Lord. Amen. So the following day, this man got home, prayed and prepared as usual. He went back, come and see harvest. The devil knew what was going to happen. He tempted the man, thinking the man would fall. But the man had the, the glory of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. So mind what you think about. Mind the thoughts of your heart. Mind the product of the way Mind the product of your thoughts. Mind what you allow to grow in your heart. Otherwise, it will become a mighty fortress in your heart that it will not even allow the word of God to gain grant in your life. And then the enemy will have his way. Another thing, I'm rushing through them because I want to finish on time so that I don't delay us unnecessary. Another thing the enemy uses is what I call procrastination. What did I call it? Procrastination. Don't worry, I can do it tomorrow. Don't worry, I can do it tomorrow. God is showing you a revelation, maybe through dreams or through vision, depending on his gifts for you, maybe or through the of or voice. That look, danger is knocking. The enemy is trying to come. You say, Oh, I cannot pray today. Maybe I should pray. I'll pray tomorrow. By the time tomorrow comes, another other activities of life will come. I'll pray tomorrow. And then before the third day comes, you have forgotten. And then the problem will now begin to roll in from the left and say, ah, Oh God, where are you? You some people will even hope, ah, come on. They will be so they will have this they have this air country. The audacity to open their God and say, God, why me? If anybody should say that, no matter under what, whatever circumstances, I'll say, when God was telling you, what, what, where were you going to choose? Because not such a thing will not happen to a child of God without, without God giving you a hint. God will tell you, watch, watch. Well, especially when that dream becomes repeated. We will talk more about these things maybe next week by the grace of God. Or if, if God did not change the topic, because the talk, I, I, don't, I develop the topics as they come to my mind. So, people of God, be very, very careful about procrastination. It steals your time, and your time accumulates to what is called the lifetime. Time wasted can never be regained. If I'm supposed to work yesterday, and I didn't work, I didn't make any money. That money is gone and gone for forever. If I work twice today, I may make the equivalent of what I'm supposed to make yesterday and today, but that thing that I was supposed to gain yesterday is gone. I have only made double for today. What if I had worked yesterday and I worked double today again? Would I have made more money? That is the thing. Procrastination is the thief of time. Time accumulates to be to, 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 to be. A life time. Let's look at this scriptures. Proverbs chapter 12. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 27. It says, A slothful man will enjoy the grace of God so much that God will open the door of blessing to him. But for him to process the blessing and turn it into money, into blessing, real blessing, physical blessing, he will not be able to. Do. Yes, Proverbs 12, 27. Yes, yeah, verse 27. The slothful man roasted not that which he took in hunting. The slothful man roasted not that which he took in hunting. But the substance of a diligent man is present. But the substance of a diligent man, a man that will take appropriate action at the appropriate time, is what? Precious. 
So what is God talking about here? The grace of God will allow a man, that slothful man, to get up from his house, to go into the bush to farm, I mean to, to hunt. He will catch a big animal. He will now bring it home and leave it. Ah, I can't roast this thing. I'm too tired. I will roast it later in the day. That day we pass. The second day, no, don't worry. I will roast it. No problem. I will roast it. And another hour will pass. Two hours will pass. One whole day will pass again. What do you think will happen to that animal? It will rot. Do you now think whatever is left, do you think he can sell it as much as he will sell the whole animal when it is fresh? Who will even buy a rotting animal anyways? God will give us opportunities from time to time, from time to time. But the moment you allow the devil to sow the seed of procrastination into your life, and that's why some Christians are poor. If you allow the devil to sow the seed of procrastination into your life, that is how opportunities will be rotting right before your face. Some people will be living in abundance like it's all around, but they will be living in poverty. Praise the Lord. It is not because God has not released the blessing. God has released the blessing, but they are so full. They are not having value to the ideas, to the knowledge, to the opportunity that God is giving them. People of God, let us think and be wise. The enemy is subtle. He will not stop us from coming to Canada, but he will stop us. He may stop us. He will not stop us in the name of Jesus. But he will try to stop us by wasting our time for us. That is the thing. Okay, all that people can, yeah, yeah, no problem. Let's just relax. Let's just enjoy. No problem. Let's just manage it like that. No, no, don't procrastinate. If God is showing you, leading you, teaching you how to make profit, go ahead and do it. Take steps. This is a land of opportunity. Nobody is competing with anybody. There is no big man. As far as I always say, there's no big, we all know the secret of everybody. It's all, all, always of credit. So if anybody is using Lincoln now and navigator, if I want to get it now, 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 now. so nobody is competing with anybody. If God is blessing you, take steps, but be wise. I use the credit thing for, for those who may not understand how credit works. Be very careful. Hello. Hi. Did I say be very careful? Yes. <laughs> so if you need to know more about that, you see me in, in, in person. I, my bill is not too much. Ten thousand dollars. <laughs> Amen. But the bottom line of it is this. Do not procrastinate. Take opportunity. Hit the high on when it's hot. Because when it is cold, you will have to use double before you can mold it. Production engineers are here. They will teach you better than one. Not me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You will notice that I have not mentioned sin generally, right? Sin, is, is, it appears that it's, it's just too obvious. Let's leave that one for the last. Let's talk about another one quickly. That is doubt. When the enemy is talking with you, he wants to confuse you so that you begin to doubt the almightiness of the almighty. And the moment you begin to doubt God, you begin to lose favor with God. And that is one of the things the enemy enjoys the most. And that's why James chapter 1, verse 6, says a double-minded man should not hope to receive any. Yes, let's, 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 let's doubt. James chapter 1, verse 6. Let whoever wants to ask, ask in faith, not the wavering, for he that wavereth or doubts is like a wave of the sea. Uh -huh. Let not that man think, not that, man think that, he that he will receive anything, no matter what, from the Lord. Praise the Lord. That is the thing. That is what the devil wants to do. If we want you to doubt God, if we want you to doubt the all-sufficient God that can provide everything, and the moment you allow doubt to begin to come into your heart, you're thinking, ah, maybe God will not be, maybe I should go and just go and look for something else to help myself. I pray doubt will not gain ground in our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. Last, let me just round it up because of time. Summarily, don't allow sin. Don't allow what? Sin. And I will just summarize it by referring us to Jeremiah chapter 50. Jeremiah chapter 50 and verse 7. Very crucial. I want us to pay attention to it. 
Because I know we all know sin, 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 sin. We all know it. Yeah. Let's see what, what sin does. Yes. 15 verse 7. Yes. All that finds the children of God, the people of Israel, have devoured them. Yes. And their enemies and their adversaries said, It is not our fault. They are the one that opened the door by their sin. The habitation, the protection of justice. Ah! Even the enemy knew that God was their habitation, was their protection, was their father, was their God. But the enemy had the effort to beat its chest and say, it is not my fault. They opened the door. How? By their sins. People of God. And at that point, you can you see the way the enemy said, God of justice. Oh, yes, he has said it's not sin. If you see you're on your own. So the moment they sin, the enemy said, It is not my fault. They opened the door, they allowed it. Because they had no please, let's read that scripture again. Please, I want us to please listen to. Can somebody read it again? Yeah. yeah. Okay, Pastor. Okay, good. No problem. Yeah. All their enemies that found them. All, all the enemies they can win, all the enemies that should not even try them, all of them have devoured them. And their adversaries said. And their enemies said. Their friend, no. We didn't see no, it's not our fault. No. They are the one that caused it. They are the one that opened the door for us. They are the one that gave us the opportunity because they have sinned against the Lord. The habitation of justice. The habitation of what? Justice. God is a just God. Even the, Lord, the hope of their Even the Lord, the hope of their father. Can you see how just the justice of God cannot protect a sinner that does not repent? The justice of God will say, okay, fine, you have seen, go ahead and pay. But the moment you come back to the Lord Jesus Christ, that is the only thing you can escape. That's the only way. The same thing happens to Job. I was trying to explain to Roger one time. God is a God of justice. The moment you violate a spiritual principle, you set another law in motion. It's automatic. It's like when you get to the tap, the moment you turn on the tap like this, what that begins to do what? To come out. You have violated the law that stops the water from flowing. The moment you violate that water, the water begins to flow. Ignorance is not an excuse. Though. And I love, I love to give this illustration that a man climbs a very tall tower and got to the top and began to look and say, yes, I'm doing the job now. I'm, I'm going to fly like a bird. He jumped and began to fly. And way in the middle, he realized that, yeah, what have I done? I'm going to die. Ah, God have mercy. God have mercy. Forgive me. Forgive me. Do you think that will prevent that man from crashing? He won't. He will pay. Even though he will, he will break his leg, he may break his back, God may let him live, but he will have to live with the consequences of his ignorance. He jumped. It was ignorance of the law of gravity. No problem. But the law would demand justice. So God is a God of justice. He's a God of principle. His principles are clear. Don't sin. Don't worship idol. Don't sin. Remember to serve God. And all those ten commandments, they are there to guide us. So the moment you set yourself against the will of God, be ready for the consequences. Their enemies said, we do not sin. I hope God will give us better understanding in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And so that is why it is important for every one of us not to give the devil a legal card. Proverbs chapter 26. As we begin to run, run off, Proverbs 26, verse 2. Proverbs 26, verse 2. It says, cause, costless. Yes, yes, yes. As a bird flies. As a bird flies around wandering, as the swallow by flying, I swallow by flying. So the cursed costless shall not come. So the curse costless shall not come. So that means a curse will not land. The enemy will not have a hand except something caused it to happen. Except you cooperate. That is what the scripture is telling us here. Cross, C U R S E, will not come without a curse. If I, for instance, I'm here now, all of us are here, we didn't touch anything, we didn't steal anything, we didn't destroy anything. 
And after our leaving, somebody now comes in to steal something and go. And then some, somebody says, ah, somebody has stolen something here. Ah, so, 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 so shall it be for the person? So shall it be for the person? So shall it be so? Are we going to be scared? No. Is the cause going to touch us? No, because there is no cause for the curse to come into our lives. A curse causeless shall not come. So people of God, let us take note. Whatever you are doing, wherever you are walking, however you are going about your life, do not give the enemy a legal grant to stay in your life because our God is a God of justice. The enemy will say, look, he has opened the door. And God will say, fine, he has opened the door, no problem. The day you will realize that, ah, I'm the one that opened the door and cried to God, God will say, hey, now he has cried to me and I am his God, the God of justice. Now get out of his life. That is how it operates in the spirit. So please don't joke with spiritual principles. God does not joke with them. God does not compromise with them. And the enemy will always want you to violate them. I pray God will give us better understanding in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So people of God, let us take note of that. Let us take note of that. But whether, maybe there are people online that may be listening to me now on Facebook, on YouTube, or whenever you're going to listen to this message. I want you to take note of one thing, that if you have not given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you are treading on dangerous ground. You are walking in the territory of the enemy. You are already in his cage. There is no way you can live a life without sin. And the moment you go into sin, the enemy will oppress you. So I want to encourage you, the first step out of it, for you to enjoy the protective hedge of God around his children, is to enlist yourself among his children. If you don't do so, you are opening the door for the enemy to oppress you. So if you want to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, just bow your head wherever you may be and begin to talk to God and say, Lord, I need you. Jesus Christ, save me. And for those of us that are here, those of us that have given our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ, let's give thanks to God. I say, Father, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Thank you for opening my eyes to the workings of the Spirit. Thank you for revealing some of the secret weapons of the enemy. Thank you for not leaving us in the dark, O oh God. Lord, in your mercies, our Father and our Lord, we appreciate you for your word that you have sent to us this morning. It is not of him that will it or not of him that run it, but it is you, O oh God, that gives us the grace. And we thank you, O oh God, for exposing the weaknesses of the enemy to us so that you will not be able to have a upper hand in our lives. Lord, to you be all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, O oh God, because you have opened and enlightened our hearts to understanding. And therefore, Lord, is our prayer, O oh God, for the grace to bring all these things to remembrance. Anytime we meet them, O oh God, you will grant unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for answering prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We're going straight into prayers. Please, we may rise or sit as may be convenient, but be sure that you are praying. You may rise if it is convenient for you. You may sit if it is convenient for you. But make sure that you are what? You are praying. The first thing we are going to say in our prayers today. Father, wherever I have opened my mouth to reveal the secret of my glory, to reveal, I'm not talking about Mrs. Uh, Uriel. <laughs> she's, she's the only one bearing glory now. Your glory will shine in Jesus' name. Wherever I have opened my mouth too wide, Wherever I have leaked the secret of my glory, wherever I have leaked the secret of my children to the enemy, Father, deliver us. Prayer in the name of Jesus. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, whenever I have opened my mouth to talk about the secret of your glory for my life, to talk about the secret of your plans for my life, to the enemy, Lord, deliver me. I cry to you today, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, wherever I have unnecessarily exposed the glory of my children, 
for the enemy, Lord. Lord, help me, O oh God. Deliver us, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, I cry to you today, Lord, for help. I cry to you today, oh my God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Lord, help me. Father, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. We are still going to talk to myself, God, wherever I have given the devil a legal grant to stand and to accuse me before you. Father, deal with the situation, Lord. Have mercy. Deliver me with mercy. Look at the suffering of Jesus Christ for my sake and deliver me and deliver my entire house of prayer in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, wherever I have given the enemy a legal grant to accuse me, Wherever I have given the enemy a legal grant to attack me, Lord, I pray, you will take away that legal grant for me in the name of Jesus. Lord, I hold up before you. I ask over oh for your help. I ask over oh for your mercy. Have mercy upon me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Deliver me, Lord. Deliver my home, Lord. Deliver my ministry, Lord. In the name of Jesus. People of God, talk, talk, talk to God. Talk to God. Whatever sin might have, that might have opened the door, of your life, of your family, to the enemy. Ask God to protect you. Ask God to build the head again and rebuke the devil for your sins. Pray, people of God, pray, pray, open your heart, open your mouth to God, and deal with it once and for all. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. The scripture in Zechariah chapter 3 says, the angel of the Lord said to the devil, is we not the one that is delivered us out of the, okay, that was the thing. Um, chapter 3 and the verse 7 to 8. Verse 2. Yes, verse 2. He says, and the Lord said unto Satan, the adversary, the Lord rebuke you, O Satan, even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem rebuked thee. Is not this a brand plugged out of a fire? What is the scripture telling us? The angel rebuked Satan and said, Look, this guy has suffered enough. His life was burning away, but the Lord has delivered him. He will also talk to us and say, Lord, deliver me today. Snatch me away from the hands of the enemy. Deliver my family. Deliver my destiny. Oh, yeah, begin to pray right now. Remember Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I cry to you, O oh God, today. Lord, deliver me from the clutches of the enemy. In the mighty name of Jesus, I have suffered enough, O oh God. It is now time for me, O oh God, to enter into the fullness of your blessings. For me. In the name of Jesus, I have suffered enough, O oh God. It is now time for me to enjoy the fullness of joy in the presence of God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, deliver me. Lord, snatch me away from the enemy. Snatch my wife, snatch my children, snatch my ministry out of the hands of the enemy, O God. Wherever we have traded ourselves into his hand, Lord, deliver us and snatch us. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. I'll read that scripture again. The, the earlier part says, and the, Lord, and the Lord said unto Satan, the Lord rebuke you. So, because of talk to God and say, Lord, on my behalf, and on behalf of my household, and whatever you want to add under it, the Lord, Lord, rebuke the Satan, rebuke the devil, rebuke the adversary, rebuke the, uh, the accuser on our behalf. Well, let's begin to pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray unto you, Lord. I cannot help myself at this point. 
I cry unto you, Lord, rebuke Satan concerning my life. Rebuke Satan concerning my wife. Rebuke Satan concerning my children. Rebuke Satan concerning this church. Rebuke Satan, oh God, concerning my extended family, my entire household, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Father, by yourself, rebuke the devil. In the name of Jesus, he will not fulfill his enterprise in our life. Enough. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. The scripture in First Timothy and Second Timothy chapter one, verse seven, says, "For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of sound mind." You are not going to rebuild that spirit of fear. Say, in the name of Jesus, spirit of fear, get out of my life. From this moment onward, you will no longer journey with me. Get out. Move away from me. Prayer in the name of Jesus. Vocalize it. Say it out. In the name of Jesus. Spirit of fear, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you in the mighty name of Jesus. I rebuke you and I cast you out of my life and for my family. I cast you out of this church in the name of Jesus. Spirit of fear, you have no room here. You have no place here. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the same vein, Rebuke the spirit of confusion and spirit of doubt as well as spirit of procrastination. I rebuke the spirit of fear. I rebuke the spirit of doubt. I rebuke the spirit of procrastination and laziness. In the name of Jesus. Get out of our means, oh you spirit of fear. Get out of our means, oh you spirit of doubt. Get out of our lives, oh you spirit of procrastination. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Now we're going to ask that the Holy Spirit of the living God to come and fill us from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. That there will be no room for the enemy again in our life. So that the spirit of love, the spirit of power, the spirit of sound mind and joy will fill our life. So yeah, let's begin to pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask, oh God, for the living spirit, the spirit of the living God, the Holy Spirit, come into our lives. Come and help us. The Father, our helper, our supporter, our comforter, Come into our lives, oh God, and give us love, give us power, give us sound mind, give us joy in the name of Jesus. Come and reign supreme in our midst, oh God, by the power of your spirit in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Now we're going to say every ground that I might have lost to the enemy in that week, whatever the enemy might have stolen out of my ignorance or mistakes or whatever reason, I claim them back full measure with interest. Today, prayer in the name of Jesus. Father, whatever virtue, whatever blessing, whatever progress, whatever glory, whatever honor that I might have lost to the enemy, Lord, let there be full restoration with interest in the name of Jesus. Any ground that I might have lost for the enemy, I claim them back right now and I take possession of them right now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. You want to bring your personal petitions before the Lord? 
What are those other issues that you want to settle before the Lord? Talk to God right now. I say, Lord, I bring this before you. These and these and these and these are getting before you. See to them for me, O Lord. Please call upon me and I will answer you. Let's begin to round up as we begin to give thanks to God because He's our God. He's our God. And it has pleased Him to call us His children. It is by grace that we are saved, not of works, let any man should lose. We are not qualified, but it has just pleased Him to just deliver us. It has pleased Him to help us, to give us victory. To make us to be more than conquerors. Ah, we thank you, Father. We bless your name, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. Blessed be your name, Lord. Blessed be your name, Lord. Blessed be your name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we give thanks. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are very, very grateful. We bless your name. We glorify your holy name, O God. Because you are our God, and you will be our God forever and ever. We thank you for the victory that we have in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the finished work on the cross. Lord, we return all glory to you. Lord, we return all honor to you. Father, we return all adoration to you. Blessed be your name, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we have opened our hearts to you. We have stammered in your presence as a child who stammered before his father and the father will pay attention. Lord, we ask that you mercifully grant our heart desires in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray that from this moment onward, the devil will not be able to take advantage of us again in the name of Jesus Christ. That Lord, when our enemy shall come like a flood, your spirit will lead the standard against him in the name of Jesus Christ. From this moment onward, no weapon formed against us shall prosper in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, because we know it is, it is done. We thank you because we know it is a new day. Glory and honor and adoration be unto you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us stretch our hands unto the man of God, above every. He has been a blessing to us. Oh Lord, that he has brought the word of God unto our lives. He has blessed us spiritually. Let us stretch our hands unto him and pray unto the Lord. That the Lord will uphold him in the name of Jesus. All he has, Lord, all he has declared, all he has decreed on our behalf, the Lord will bring them to fruition in the name of Jesus. We then let us pray that the Lord will keep his family too, that the Lord will keep his ways, that the Lord, that the, uh, all that concerns him, the Lord will perfect in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us declare unto the Lord that the Lord will continue to expand him and mark him over in all his dreams. The Lord will continue to be with him. The Spirit of God will not depart from him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so, Father, King of Glory, we thank you for the word that came out. O Lord, we thank you for all of you indeed. Lord, you have remembered us. By that, Lord, King of Glory, O Lord Almighty, Father, we pray. All that I have declared over our life, Lord, Father, we know. Let them be established in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Father, every good, every good that has been destroyed today, Father, let them remain permanent in our lives in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Father, Lord, the, the hand of the heavens shall be destroyed over our lives in the name of Jesus. We bring down all the procrastination. 
will not pray over our lives anymore in the name of Jesus. The grace to honor our special medical portion in the name of Jesus. In this land of Canada, we shall move forward, we shall follow you, we shall move forward and do a for you and to your glory in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Quickly, brethren, let us let us package our offering. I know some of us we are going to be transferring our life, but however, we need to honor the Lord. The Bible says, God should come before him empty. Please, let us do a transfer, but out of the people to jump up to the Lord and glorify the name of the Lord for what we are doing in our life. I would really to thank you for the Lord. Continually win in the mighty name of Jesus. And for those who don't know, 
the vision for this mission, this ministry, is to prepare or equip the saints for what? For victorious earthly living, for the work of God on earth, and for eternal glory. So those three legs are what are supporting this ministry, and that's our focus, that's our mission, that's our assignment, and that is what we must do by the grace of God. And the Lord will bless every one of us as we partake in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And at this juncture, I want to welcome a wonderful family, brother and sister, and a daughter. Beautiful people, wonderful people all the way from Nigeria. The newest, the newest I want to I'm sorry, it was about the mother, 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 but as far as we are concerned, we are just seeing them and they are in the US. Let's celebrate our brother, Mr. and Mrs. Aki today. And I am, I am praise the Lord. You are welcome in the name of Jesus. 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 We are happy to have you, we are happy to receive you, we are happy to welcome you. And we pray that the blessings of God will continue to multiply upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. This one shall be great, she shall be mighty. The glory of God will radiate upon her life in the name of Jesus Christ. Among her heroes, she will stand out for good and for the glory of God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The errors flying around in this generation will not touch her in the mighty name of Jesus And as your verses, in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. That your language is for somebody, those who understand it is good. <laughs> Please be seated. God bless you in Jesus' name. Um, I think our um, pack and track evangelism comes up next next week Saturday or when? Where she has forgotten. Okay, this coming Saturday. Okay, what time? The, the, the problem with me, you all know. First Saturday. Okay. Okay, I think what what I'll just do is to post it on the. On the, on the when I confirm, I'll post it on the on the platform of the church so that all of us will be uh, aware. I pray God will bless us in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay. So by the grace of God, all roads lead to uh, what's the name of the you have not sent me the address. Sorry, send uh, it's me, Mrs. Saga. Okay. The address is 135. I, mean, I think you just type it and send it to the platform of the church. So you just text it to me, to, or you put it on the platform of the church so that everybody can see it. Uh, God will bless us in the name of Jesus Christ. Those are the kind of good news we always want to hear, and it will go around every one of us in the name of Jesus. We're going to do house work, just what the uh, I'm going to do the one as one more. That's how it's going on. And by the time we finish going around, the second round also will also come in the name of Jesus Christ. We bless God for that testimony. It is well in the name of Jesus Christ. And as I always do, I want to remind us, remember to talk to somebody about the Lord Jesus Christ in the course of the week and invite them to worship the Lord. Our God is the solution to all the problems of the world. And I pray he will bring solutions to our lives as well in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Commit your ways to the hands of the Lord. Trust in Him and we will perfect it. What are your plans for this new week? Reel them out before the Lord. Item by item, the ones that, that are coming to mind. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledging.
Let's begin to bring our prayer to a close as we give thanks to God. Lord, in your mercies, our Lord and our God, we thank you for all that we have been able to do in your presence. We thank you for the enlightenment from your word. We thank you for answered prayers. We thank you for acceptable worship and sacrifices. Lord, we return all glory to you. We're not touching any of the glory, Lord. We're not sharing your glory with you, Lord. We return everything back to you. Father, we say, without glorifying and exalted in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we are bringing this service to a close. We pray, oh God, that as we shall be going into the world of presence, we will not depart from our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Wherever we go, oh God, you shall conquer the territories for us in the name of Jesus Christ. Anywhere that we shall go, that your presence will not go with us, may we not go there in the mighty name of Jesus Whatever we lay our hands upon this week, let them prosper beyond our imaginations in the name of Jesus. Lord, it is your word. You said we shall be the head and not the tail. We shall be above and not the moon. So shall it be with every soul connected to this ministry in the mighty name of Jesus. People of God, as you go into the world, this week, go and win in the name of Jesus. Go and be victorious in the mighty name of Jesus. Go and conquer territories in the mighty name of Jesus. Go and possess the land in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare, all land of Canada, we yield your increase to the children of God here in the mighty name of Jesus. This land will not swallow any of us in the mighty name of Jesus. We shall be mighty in this land. Our children shall be great in this land in the mighty name of Jesus. And as many as are looking up to God for the perfection of the generation papers, the Lord will perfect in the mighty name of Jesus. Testimonies upon testimonies to the goodness of God shall be our portion in the name of Jesus. Every mountain for every one of us today becomes stepping stones for higher grounds in the mighty name of Jesus. Every challenge becomes miracles in the mighty name of Jesus. Every power of evil dreams I cancel in the mighty name of Jesus. People of God begin to receive fresh revelation. Begin to receive fresh understanding. Begin to receive fresh blessings. According to the word of the Lord, it says our Lord is our God that they will loaded us with benefits. On a daily basis this week, we will not miss the blessings of God in the name of Jesus. When next we shall gather next Sunday to wash, every one of us will come loaded with God's blessings in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answering prayer. As you go into the world, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord focus the light of his countenance upon you and grant you peace now and forevermore. Amen. We shall take our Dalsan and ten. Is it clear in our bulletin? Because I have to economize the heat today. We are running out of it. Can we read it from the back? God is with us, God is with us, okay? <laughs> Thank you. 